Welcome. And where are we today? Have a little guess at where we are. A quick glance would seem to put us in maybe Greece. I don't know what your guess was. And also how old? How old might this be? And it would not seem like this was a building built in the 1850s. But this is actually the Palace of Justice in Brussels, Belgium. And let's have a little look. Here we are. And the Palace of Justice was built between 1866 and 1883. The total cost of construction, land and furnishings, was somewhere in the region of 45 million francs. It is reputed to be the largest building constructed in the 19th century and is a notable landmark of Brussels. So really amazing. I feel like I have never seen this building until recently. And here's a little look in a 1944 postcard. And this thing is just a monster. I mean, complete excess in every way. And it actually appears as if there's a whole other underground floor here. This is actually only the second floor. Here we see the first floor, down here. And there's stairs going up and into this section here. And what looks like a ramp, perhaps, I'm not sure. And another little look. We see little people down here. Tiny little people. And another little look, towering above the homes, a real beauty. And initially it was this photo that I posted at the end of a video, real briefly, and a lot of people asked where it was, and I thought I would just share it real quick. I would love to go into more depth, as it is just a remarkable structure. And today I wanted to start off by looking at some beautiful glass. And we spend a lot of time looking at impressive block work and buildings that really don't seem to make any sense, that don't seem to have been carved, but rather seem to have been cast. And so here is a beautiful glass type of grail and very very intricate ornamentation and this beauty comes from Germany in Cologne and it's called the Dish Cantharis. The object was found in Cologne, Germany in 1864. Its first known owner was the collector Charles Dish. A cantharis is a drinking vessel with higher handles, and it was used to consume wine. This example was elaborately decorated with gilding on the outside of the cup, over which a network of hot glass trails was placed in a zigzag pattern. So very fascinating to have been found in 1864 and truly a masterpiece. And what started me down this path was this video, and it's an entire beach, just filled with colorful glass, of all colors, of colors of glass that we've never seen before. Here at this beach you have tons, but not only are there just tons and hordes of glass at this beach, but what we also have is melted stone infused with glass and other objects. And here we can have a little look 
at what this melted stone looks like. And again, infused with uh, a whole era and just absolutely fascinating to experience in really within a hundred years what the melting of stone may look like. And now the story that they give us is that this Fort Bragg in California used to dump their trash over the side of the hill and they dumped so much trash and eventually set fire to it and would move to another location and all of this glass and all of this melted stone infused with trash they're telling us is the result of this era and the history of Fort Bragg in 1906 the residents established an official water dump site behind the Union Lumber Company when the dump site filled up in 1943 the site was moved to what is known as site 2 the active dump site lasted until 1967 and here we can have a look at its location in California way up here the pounding of the waves broke down the glass and pottery and tumbled them into pieces small and smooth and here another little look at the beauty and once again, I mean, what are you using glass for? I mean, are we making bottles? Are we making bottles this thick? So many of them? I mean, we would expect bottles and window panes and even cathedral windows, for that matter, to be very thin in comparison to these. Um, that video was showing him holding many, and many of them are just chunks, you know, as you can see here. They're not thin little slivers by any means. These are very, very ornate, and, you know, even this one here, it doesn't even really seem like any practical kind of glass, just beautiful, and, you know, infused with these imperfections. Here we see a little bit of red, and so yes, you know, I think that there is more of a mystery surrounding this. So they tell us that glass uh, was made as early as the 27th century BC in ancient Egypt in Mesopotamia and glass beads dating back to the 15th and 16th century in Syria and glass making was a small-scale artisan activity until the Emperor Augustus in 27 BC to 14 AD he decided to include glass making in the crafts he wanted to develop by centralizing them in Italy. He imported glass workers from Syria and Judea. They didn't volunteer. Most of them were brought in to Italy as slaves. Nevertheless, glass soon became a successful alternative to pottery. This brown glass cup is decorated with gold, sandwiched between two layers of glass which have been fused together it has a cage and glass handles that were then applied. There is another kind of caged vessel produced by Roman glass artists, where the cage is carved away from the glass body of the piece. So really amazing what they are attributing to the Roman abilities, things we can't even do today. And while on the subject of glass, what is the melting point of glass? And the melting point of glass is 1020 degrees Fahrenheit. So 1020. And what about glass in the old world? The biggest glass palace in the world in Leipzig, Germany. They call the Great Hall at the Leipzig Fair the biggest glass palace in the world. It's the largest levitated glass hull, 240 meters long and 80 wide, with over a thousand tons of glass floating above your head. Really remarkable, as are these crystal palaces found all over the world. 
And here was a little palace in Germany, in Munich. In the 19th century, there was the Great Palace, a huge glass building with an iron supporting structure. Rather unusual for the time, the palace was the first example of a new architectural style in the dawning age of technology. Man accepted the challenge of this project. Very amazing technology indeed for the 1850s. The unprecedented building was built in just nine months after being commissioned by King Maximilian II in 1853. He wanted to put on a domestic customs union exhibition in Munich. However, there was no building in the entire city that was suitable for this, so they decided to build one. Due to the short construction time, a decision was taken to make a structure from glass and iron, which was designed by the Royal Building Officer, August Voigt. This was based on the Crystal Palace in London, which had also been built in a very short period. The building was 800 feet long, with a maximum width of 280 feet. In August of 1853, they signed a contract and used prefabricated and structurally identical sections made from cast iron, wrought iron, and oak, which could be bolted together. They really saved time. The total construction cost today would be estimated at 170 million euros. The Glass Palace met a tragic end on July 6th, 1931, when it was completely burned to the ground in a major fire. The cause of the fire was never identified. Along with the building, precious pieces of art which were exhibited there were also destroyed. So the Crystal Palace, very amazing and very early time period. And many still remain very suspicious the way that these iron and glass buildings would burn to the ground. And here we can see iron in the periodic table and it has a melting point of 2800 degrees Fahrenheit and this was really beautiful the Preston Bradley Hall in Chicago in the Cultural Center amazing dome and amazing symbology in here it looks like a little zodiac symbols and probably a lot more and the next thing I wanted to show was this world's largest stained glass window now the largest stained glass window is at the resurrection cemetery in justice illinois it seems like an unlikely destination for a glass lover but if you drop by at sunset you'll be treated to a spectacular display but very beautiful and here is the saint chapelle in Paris, France. Now this is legit. This is the real deal. And this is the kind of glass that we would imagine that would leave the kind of debris that we saw on that beach. All different colors and nowhere else do we see so many colors of glass and just beyond anything that we're doing today along with everything from this older world and while looking for glass i ran across this article on this 14 million dollar tribeca new york penthouse it has a rotunda with a gorgeous stained glass oculus once featured on the cover of architectural digest this penthouse just hit the market for 14 million and the place was built around 1898 it was a commercial building originally 
which really doesn't seem to make any sense why it would have this ornate stained glass window. I found it really funny that, you know, the repurposing of this building, it just seems so obvious that they really didn't know what to do with it. Originally it was used as a dining room for members of the New York Wool Exchange, the building's original tenant. And here it is. But really amazing. I thought I would just share that real quick. And now back to this Fort Bragg, where the glass beach is. Very interesting story, and very mysterious. You know, we're told that originally the area was settled for Native Americans as a reservation. And soon after that, a fort arrives on the scene, a military fort and really not much population. We can see here that the population in, let's say, 1950 was 3,800, 1900s, about 1,500 people, very small population, and in present day around seven or 8,000, not really a booming area, not then, and not now. And yet we're told this massive amount of glass just finds itself littered all over the place. And, you know, we don't see these in Los Angeles or in San Francisco. This is a special place. This is Glass Beach, a tourist attraction, a anomalous feature in California and yet we're told that this small population just littered littered an entire beach with these heaps of garbage and the result is this beautiful gem-like pretty thick and stone-like glass and was there a massive building with stained glass perhaps at these sites and if we have a little look on Google Earth we can see what the town looks like from above and you know what's really strange is here the prime real estate of any coastal city is pretty much nothing no development in fact what looks like undevelopment you know, we see a footprint of a bunch of buildings here. And in fact, these lots look larger than these lots across the street. So these were some massive type of buildings here. And this would make sense. And really not all the glass that's found being the result of this little small population dumping their trash but rather the remains of whatever was here and probably a glorious amount of architecture with ornate colorful glass windows and everything else and here we're just seeing the scattered remains on this touristy glass beach and I really would like to visit this place. So that's all. And one more thing. This was shared with me in a comment. Thanks, Money Penny. A mysterious city appeared in the sky in China. And this is actually pretty old, from 2015. Yet I had never seen it. And let's have a little look at this city in the sky and really square seeming tops really not seeming cloud like and just pretty impressive here again this is really let's go back and look at that one that was something really special there i don't know and this is on you know mainstream news I'm not sure. That seems so real right there. There's even antenna. 
And I believe that this uh, Feta Morgana is some sort of uh, mirage. We all know about these mirages. Oh, these magical mirages. And let's go on again. Here we go. I mean, this is, you know, not seeming cloud-like. And, and even they are saying that it's uh, the temperature that bounces through different layers of air. Really remarkable play on air and temperature. I mean, we see a, a window. I mean, to imagine that a mirage is, you know, going to be so perfect in this sense, like a castle in the sky. And so what are we really seeing? What is this? And it appears as if there's like a waterfall coming off of here and dumping right into the clouds. Really, really beautiful and mysterious. And, and we can have another look at another angle even. Here was another angle. So, I mean, if it was just one angle, it would be one thing. And this city appeared shortly after a heavy hailstorm. And really just looking like an old world architecture, just, you know, just from the silhouette that we're seeing. And again, this news channel is trying to make some kind of sense of mirages and really, I think, just serving a benefit. And so I don't know what to make of it. Just really fascinating, and I thought I would share. So that's it for today, and do have a blessed day. And please like, comment, and subscribe.